Hey there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to another day of color craze. And today I have a layout that is featuring a whole bunch of different greens, a little bit of blue, and kind of a black and a white. And so I'm really happy with that color combination. And so I pulled out some different paper glazes um, and I will link those down below for you so you can actually see the names of them in case you just missed them. Um, I, I know I held them up there and it was pretty quick, so I will link them down below. I won't, I'm not going to go over the names of them right here, but um, you can see them if you really would like to purchase them or if you're just interested in the name of the colors. So I started out with this tree stencil and that is from Picket Fence Studio. And I'm using this paper from Paper Rose. And what I was trying to do is kind of lessen the yellow that's kind of like right in the center of those trees. But um, it's not going to matter in at the end of the day anyway. And you're not going to actually see much of that stencil work either because I kind of go a different route with this. And what I did was I went to my silhouette and I looked for some trees that I could cut out and I found those uh, through the Creative Fabrica site. I don't know if it's Creative Fabrica or Creative Fabrica. Um, anyway, it's I'll link them down below as well. And I do have actually an affiliate link for them. So if you're interested in purchasing from them, either of these two files, the links will, for those will be down below as well as the subscription for the all access pass to buy anything or to get anything for um, just the price of the subscription. And that's actually discounted too. It's normally, I think, $29 a month for the uh, subscription. But with my affiliate link, you get the first month for a dollar and then $19 for every month after that. So if you're interested in that, all of those links are down below. They have a lot of different things. They've got fonts, they've got, um, SVGs, they've got clip art, they've got coloring pages, and all of those things can be turned into SVGs if you know how to do that. Um, so it's a great site and they've got a lot of things available and r some really awesome fonts. So I pulled out my um, Nouveau Mousse and I put the names of those up on the screen for you. Uh, and what I did was I cut these three trees on my silhouette and they are the trees that I got from that Creative Fabrica site and I am just rubbing over them with this mixed media and kind of smudging them all together. I don't want them super bright green like that uh, that lemon lemony lime green that I've got I'm using currently. Um, so I am going to pull in a little bit more paper glaze in the darker green and that's going to darken them up a little bit for me which makes me happy. I also used a little bit of the shimmers that you saw there um, over the top of some of these because I wanted to darken them up a little bit. I don't want them just flat black. I want them to have many different shades and uh, contrasts and depth to them. So I am just kind of like mixing them up how I kind of feel like it maybe. Um, darkening some areas, leaving some in um, brighter, er some areas brighter. So I'm liking the way it looks um, in spite of hating the way that it feels on my fingers because I don't like my hands dirty. Um, I know that's kind of a weird thing, but that's just kind of, that's just me. Um, I, I don't really go with finger art or finger painting very often because uh, I don't like my hands dirty. But um, in this case, it worked out really well. And so I really like that the, the way that they turn out and I'm really happy with uh, the different sizes of the trees. So I just resized them in my silhouette studio on the 12 by 12 mat in silhouette to kind of be what I thought the size I wanted them to be on my page um, is. So hopefully that made sense. And in order to do that, you can like on your silhouette or your Cricut software, just draw the size of photos that you have and lay them out how you would normally lay them out on your paper with the cut file underneath to kind of give you a visual. So that's just a little bit of a tip. In this case, I'm using three three by four photos. They're slightly smaller than three by four because I print on my um, Canon selfie. So they're a little bit smaller than three by four, but I just drew three three by four rectangles on my layout or on my Silhouette Studio software. So I could kind of see the placement of the trees and how big I would need to make them to show up how I wanted them to show up. 
And you might wonder why I'm putting my photos so low on the paper. And that's because I really want the trees in the background paper to show up. Um, I don't want to cover that line of trees up. And I think normally, like I, in, in a normal situation, um, I might have put all of my photos up towards the top, but I didn't feel like I wanted them floating up in the sky. So this is, this is uh, my way of working around that. So the tree that's already down on the right hand side, that does not have any dimensional tape underneath it. And then these two I popped up onto some foam tape just to give a little bit of dimension to the page so it's not all flat. And I really like how it looks that like the forest that is drawn on the paper is kind of in the background and these three trees are in the foreground. Now the three photos that I have are of me and actually my husband's not in the photo. He's the one taking the photo, um, at least the center photo. That's me and my friend's two kids on the gondola at the village at North Star. And then the other two photos are just the village at North Star. And then I went and I cut out the words, the village at North Star on my silhouette because I knew I wanted something small. I didn't want it to be super dimensional and I wanted it to have a mixed font. So I wanted um, North Star to be very bold and I wanted the village to be a little bit more um, of a softer font. So I went with a scripty font and I don't actually know the name of it uh, at the moment so I will try to link that down below as well if I can remember what the name of it is um, or if I can find it um, so if you're interested in that you can find it there hopefully if I if I can find it it'll be there and while I tape while I glue that down I'll remind you that uh, t this is our um, Friday edition of color craze and MK will have another video for you over on her channel using the same color inspiration and I really am loving how in, in a couple of cases here we've actually pulled out similar papers or the same paper um, but our layouts look completely different so it's kind of cool and um, really exciting so then I went over back over to the Creative Fabrica site and I found a cut file that had these gondolas in it. It actually had mountains and trees in the background, but on my silhouette, I was able to slice those pieces off. You could actually cut the entire thing out and then use your scissors to just cut out the pieces that you want because they're just straight lines and they're little lines. It's not like you're making circles or anything like that. But um, I was able to just slice off the pieces that I didn't want so I and delete out the mountains and the trees. It actually had a big circle around the entire um, set as well, but I didn't need any of that. I just wanted those gondola pieces. And then I have this piece of paper that had some mixed media on it from a past project and it was just in my scrap bin. So it has the Nouveau Mousse in the gunmetal gray just all over it but the paper is a bit textured it's got like lines on it and um, so I'm just using that to create the little cars of the gondola and I'm liking how that's looking I will pull out some acetate um, it's just a piece of leftover acetate from Hambly which is a super old company that's not around anymore unfortunately um, just to create the little glass windows of the gondolas and so um, I'm just using a Sharpie to to write the lines on the acetate as to where I need to cut it because, you know, pretty much that's the only pen that works on acetate. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. Everything is just being held down by my Nouveau Deluxe adhesive, which dries quick, clear, and matte finish, which makes me super happy because um, I don't like that glossy finish when you have the glue uh, kind of squish out from behind these really thin areas, especially like behind your thin alphas or um, cut files. I'd rather it be matte. It also has a really fine nozzle on it, so it's really easy to uh, keep that line super fine on these little tiny pieces. <clears throat> and then uh, once I get done with that, there's not a lot more embellishing that's going to go on. I'm just... Uh, kind of working on building this scene and then I let it kind of remain simple. Now I'm not going to put a bunch of journaling. I will have a journaling spot but I'm not going to put the majority of my journaling on this layout because this is uh, from our trip to Tahoe and so a lot of my journaling has either already gone on to other pages or will be going on to up 
upcoming pages. So I'm really just going to talk about this gondola ride and playing at the snow at the top of the mountain, um, which really there wasn't much snow. So <laughs> there wasn't much playing. It was more like snacking and um, the snow that was there was kind of icy and really hard. But um, it was a fun gondola ride anyway. And, uh, you know, we enjoyed it. So um, we definitely were a little overdressed in the for the occasion with respect to how much clothes we had on like I had on my snow boots and my long sleeves and I had my my um, down jacket with me and everything and yeah I probably needed the snow boots because there was like icy snow at the top but there was I could have gone with short sleeves and no jacket and uh, and it would, probably would have been just fine but it, it was fun to go up to the top of the mountain and they've got like some eating areas up there and some outdoor fireplaces and so that was kind of cool to sit by the fire and have a snack and just kind of wander around and check the place out. So I am popping up the, um, I guess the cable, what would be considered the cables on this gondola ride. I'm popping that up onto some black foam. I chose the black foam because it's going to show the least amount from the sides because I'm using a black cut file. Um, any other color would have shown up to way too much because the area is so thin and there's nothing like on either side of it. There's no other parts of the cut file. Um, if you will. And then the second piece, I cut that gondola off because it was, it was a little bit too centered for my likings. And I'm just going to go ahead and adhere it again back to the cables and pop that up onto some foam over a little bit further towards the right than what it was actually on um, when it was attached to those cables. And that's kind of what I mean by if you cut the entire cut file out without slicing it or um, removing any of the bits and pieces while you're in your silhouette software, you can easily just snip, uh, snip it apart and um, use the pieces that you want because it's everything is made up of these little black lines or white lines, whatever color you happen to cut it out in. It's not like it's um, you're not cu cutting anything super fancy. So I'm just using the foam tape and that's just the foam uh, Fun foam from Walmart. It is adhesive on one side, and um, just using that to go ahead and pop up the the cables there so that they don't squish down when everything is in the album. And I'm liking the way that it's looking. It's coming together um, much better than I actually had thought it would come together. And really, you can't really see any of that stencil work that I did right off the bat in the beginning, um, as I had mentioned. And um, that's not a problem. I think if you look for it, you can kind of see a little bit of it, but it, it's not really prevalent and doesn't really show. And I think sometimes that's the way things work. You start with one idea in mind and then um, another idea kind of presents itself and you go with that. So this is th that yellow piece that you saw down below is a really old journaling stamp. It's just the lines and it's from Rusty Pickle. I got it used from somebody else and um, I don't haven't used it much. So... Um, I thought it would be better to go ahead and just leave it face up on my desk and then put my paper with my acrylic block behind it over the top rather than trying to pick up the whole thing and stick it to an acrylic block um, and have it stay. And so that worked out really well for me. And then what I did was I took um, this green, I think this is the holly and the ivy is the name of the color and it's shimmers. Um, and I am just painting it onto this acrylic stamp of a tree. And this acrylic stamp was actually in a paper pumpkin kit from Stampin' Up. And I got it from someone else. I, I'm not a subscriber to Paper Pumpkin, but um, I have several friends that are. And it was a stamp that somebody wasn't using. And then I just added a little bit more green to give a little more definition and color variation to the paper. And then the stamp also comes with this kind of tree shaped um it's got lines all over it you'll see them they're little hash marks and so I I stamped that right over the top in black and that just kind of gives a little bit more of the tree shape definition to the green inked area and then that same stamp set came with a word that says explore. And so I decided to stamp that on there as well because we were kind of just exploring for the day. It was, um, we didn't have any goals or intentions in mind of visiting anything specific. It was just out to explore and go have fun and see what snow we could find. And so um, 
that's what I what I stamp there but it doesn't stamp great over the shimmers because the shimmers has a lot of shimmer in it and so I just used my black sharpie there to go over the letters that were on top of the shimmers ink so that they kind of stand out just a tad bit more and that is pretty much it for this layout. If you have questions or comments, you can leave them down below. Don't forget that the affiliate links for both of these cut files are going to be down below as well as the subscription if you're interested in subscribing to uh, Creative Fabrica. And um, I will try to remember to put all of those um, colors down below as well for your information. Thanks so much for watching. Again, comments or questions, I will get back to you as quickly as possible. I hope you go over and check out MK's video for today as well. And I hope that you have enjoyed this video and this series. I will see you guys again on Monday. Bye-bye.